All right, hey everybody, this is Rosh, and you're watching FM3 Basics. This is a YouTube series I'm putting together to help new and experienced users program all their Fractal products, including the FM3, the FM9, and the Axefx3. So a little about myself. Once again, my name is Rosh, and I'm a guitar player and guitar tech out here in the Los Angeles area. I help build and program a lot of guitar rigs for a lot of different clients, including Steve Vai, Def Leppard, Melissa Etheridge, A Perfect Circle, and more. I wanted to give back to the Fractal community and show some tips and tricks on how to program all the Fractal products, including the FM3, the FM9, and the Axe 3. If you want to see more uh, t tutorial videos, please feel free to watch them on this YouTube channel, or you can go to axefexbasics.com, fm9basics.com, and fm3basics.com. So uh, one of the things that I see with a lot of uh, new users uh, is that there is kind of a uh, misunderstanding of what clipping is actually uh, what clipping actually is on any fractal unit. In this case, we're going to be going over the FM3 because the FM3 and the FM9 and the Axe 3 have different ways to um, you know pad the input signal as well as the AD conversion and all this kind of stuff. But for the first thing I really want to emphasize before we even dive into the tutorial is that these lights that are on the unit and in this case I'm going to just slightly strum so that is the input signal. If you get into the red, like you see there, um, that is not clipping. Again, I repeat, that is not clipping. So uh, right now I'm using a Sur guitar. Uh, it's got really high output pickups. So it's a Sur uh, Modern. It's got a DSH Plus humbucker in the bridge. So this is a pretty high output pickup. Uh, and so if I'm using this factory preset, this is uh, in this case the AC20 Deluxe preset, if I strum really hard, this is like an open D chord, you can see that I'm going into the quote unquote red. Now, a lot of users see that red light and they instantly panic and think they're clipping. Now, keep in mind, number one, that isn't clipping because any of the Fractal products can also take boost in overdrive pedals. So, if you were using a boost pedal or an overdrive pedal and you were hitting the front end of a regular guitar amplifier, what would be happening is that you're actually also, quote unquote, clipping the input. But you're really not. You're just sending a super high output hot signal into the unit and then the amp algorithm is going to respond accordingly. It's totally fine to hit the red in this case. And I don't even worry about it. So again, if you were using overdrive pedals, uh, you know, standard analog overdrive pedals into the front of an FM3 um, you, and you're getting into the red, you are not clipping it. So one of the things that a lot of users will end up doing is once they see the red, they panic and then they go, oh no, I'm clipping. And then they start going to this input configuration and start padding down their signal. So for example, you can go into FM3 edit and you can pad down your signal by 6, 12 or 18 dB. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through these and show you that I'm going to strum the same way. And then we'll go down to 6. And you'll see I'm still getting into the red. Go into 12. And if I'm still strumming pretty hard, I'm getting into the red. And then if I go to 18, I'm no longer getting into the red. Now. Internally, what all the units are doing is they're compensating for padding the input and then boosting on the back end to compensate for whatever you're padding by. But again, you can hear that even with high output pickups, um, I am not concerned about getting into the red on the input. So let me explain why. To actually, oh, actually, before I even explain why, let me show you how to do it on the front panel. So if, if you want to set your input, on the front panel of the unit, you're just going to go into Setup, and then you're going to go into the I.O. menu, and then you're going to scroll down, so your I.O. may be up here, and you're going to scroll down until you get to the Input 1 pad. And you can see that as I go through each of the input pads, it's also reflected in FM3 Edit. So you can do this on the front. And of course, if you're using the second input, for whatever reason, if you have like a piezo guitar, an acoustic guitar as a second input, you can of course pad the input. Now, again, this isn't clipping. The true clipping 
is actually the clip lights directly to the right of the inputs. Okay, so directly to the right of the inputs are the clip lights. So that is when you're actually truly clipping if those turn on. So let me demonstrate some clipping for you. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna mute this output block really quickly. So if I strum, nothing's gonna happen, but you'll see that it's still getting input signal. Um, and I'm gonna put an output two block here and I'm gonna connect this. Now, what this, all this means is that my audio is being routed out of output two but right now I don't have anything connected into Alpha 2. Um, I'm currently monitoring my FM3 using in-ear so I can uh, record this video. Now, if I boost the output of this amp, just go crazy. So here we go, 20 dB, and I just boost this to 20 dB. We're gonna definitely trigger the clip light. So if you look at the output 2 clip light, I'm definitely gonna probably clip this now. Okay, so this clip light, is what's turning on. Now, that means uh, you're gonna be running into digital distortion, sounds very nasty, um, and it's very obvious when that clipping happens. So, I'm gonna delete this output block. I'm going to uh, go back to, I believe it was negative eight. Um, let's maybe just go back to here, negative 10, and we're going back to uh, the default settings of this particular preset. And then now you can hear. So the real thing to keep in mind about clipping is that it's whatever is happening from this output, output block on that's gonna clip. So again, if I mute this output block and I add the second output, I could have the amp way down here but if I'm still adding 20 dB to this output, there's gonna be a certain point that if I add some type of volume to this, we're gonna start triggering that clip light. Let's see when it happens. Yeah, right around there. So you can see that right around 10 dB on the amp and another 20 dB on the uh, output block we're starting to clip. So this can be really really kind of confusing because if you look at this the amp isn't even really getting into the red here on the output but you can see that the clip light is turning on. Okay so there are a couple ways to think about this. So let's go back to negative 10 here and the output block. You want to think of everything as like a gain staging way. Uh, you you want to think of everything as gain staging. So, for example, if you're using the scene level sliders, and then you're turning them out them all the way up to twenty, you're going to run into some clipping issues depending on where these are set. So, for example, right now in the output block, if I'm strumming, I'm going right below. Usually, most of the time, we want to level out our presets getting somewhere in that red, it's okay. If you're a little bit over, not a problem. As you can hear, it's just getting louder. But you'll notice on the unit, the clip light isn't turning on. And again, those input lights are not clip lights. Uh, and for reference, I'm keeping my pad at zero with super high output pickups. And we're not clipping. So you can keep going with this and get it louder and louder and it's totally fine. But that can be pretty loud. It's pretty loud in my ears right now. So again, what we're shooting for is somewhere around just that red line right there. And that's usually where we go. So keep in mind that again, these input lights are not clip lights. If you are going to clip, if you are clipping your unit, that clip light will turn on just like I demonstrated with the output two. I won't demonstrate it with output one. I got my in-ears plugged in. I don't want to go deaf as I'm doing this, but I wanted to offer this quick tip. So it's really important that as you're adjusting levels in each block, you can run into this kind of cascading effect of like you're turning this up here, then you're turning this level up here, and then maybe you have things running in parallel 
and you're forgetting to do the bypass mode correctly and then suddenly the levels are starting to get out of control and then you're going to start turning on that clip light. So if I mute this output block again and I start adding this output to block just to demonstrate and again you know you're turning this let's say you're this is at zero but you know this scene level you're turning up this way you could theoretically clip let's see yep and there we go the output 2 clip light is turning on and again this can be very deceptive you're looking at this meter and going well the amp isn't uh even getting into the red it's about 5 db below that red line yet i'm still clipping the unit so there's a lot of different uh ways to end up clipping the unit accidentally the most important thing that i always recommend if i was going to uh, maybe simplify this and let's just uh, reset this um, is that i tend to not adjust any levels in my presets other than the level of the amp block the level of the drive pedals is fine because you're generally always hitting the uh, amplifier uh, and adjusting the compressors. Anything that goes in front of the amplifier, you can set the levels to wherever you need to. That's totally fine because the amplifier is going to respond and react just like a real amp would. Um, anything that comes after the amp lock, I generally always try to keep at zero if it's running in series. If you're running in parallel, um, you're definitely gonna wanna adjust the level, but you have to make sure that the mix is 100%. And then keep in mind that I always keep the output at zero and then I use the scene levels to balance out my different scenes. So this is a short little video about the, uh, the nature of clipping air quotes. So again, remember that these input lights are not clip lights. I am not clipping my input of my FM3 with if I strum really hard and getting that input light to turn on. The only way I'm actually clipping the unit is, of course, if I'm adjusting the levels so high and they're being sent to an output that that clip light turns on. So uh, if you guys need any help, any one-on-one uh, -on -one consultations, any one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions, feel free to reach out to me at your convenience. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. I'm falling with you. I'm standing with you. Got it all in